And welcome back to our Breeders' Crown competition, a beautiful, clear, dry fall evening just outside Pittsburgh, 62 degrees, the wind blowing right into the horses' faces as they come through the stretch, but it has not been bothering them tonight, and I doubt if it will here. A fast track in store for us. They're out of the paddock, and here is number one Continental Spirit. He is Swedish-owned, and he is Swedish-trained, and he's won just under $500,000 in one of a three-horse stable entry, Continental Stable. And trainer Jan Janssen has decided to drive this one. Janssen went to work for Hawk and Walter when he was 14, and for 22 years has enjoyed a father son relationship with one of the great horsemen of the world. Number 1A, Super Gill. Lindstad and Johnston, the trainer and driver, consider this one the strong horse of the entry, and they should. He's won $589,000. And Bert Lindstedt won the very first Breeders' Crown ever contested with Workaholic in 1984. Let's watch uh, 1B, Southern Newton, warming up. He is the winner of the Yonkers Trot, first jewel of the Triple Crown for three-year-olds this year. But he has drawn into the second tier. Tough assignment. And Bill O'Donnell, the driver, has fantastic statistics. He has won over 3,700 races and more than $55 million in purse money. He has eight Breeders' Crown champions to his credit. And here is number two, Firm Tribute. With the sleek look of a million-dollar winner, he's won a million thirty-four thousand dollars has drawn the rail tonight and is the favorite. And young driver Mark O'Mara has an, an impeccable eye for selecting yearlings, a natural talent for training, and a fine style in the sulky. Number three, Flying Scott is next. This is the local horse, owned by Ed Ryan, the founder of Ryan Holmes. Lives right here in the area, but there'll be no joy in Meadowlands, Pennsylvania tonight for this one. Ah, you heard it here. The driver of number three is Dick Stillings, who started as a groom for famous horseman Dick Buxton when he graduated high school, got, went on his own, and has become a great success. Here's number four, Huggy Hanover. The hot horse. He's winner of the Kentucky Futurity, third jewel of the Triple Crown, and he's won the Colonial at Rosecroft in Maryland since then as well. And the driver, Ron Waples, comes from a racing family. And uh, seven years after leaving his cousin Keith Waples' employ, he was the third leading dash winner in North America. Here's number five, Rule the Wind. This was the surprise Colt in the Hamiltonian first heat when he finished second Armbro goal. He's had foot problems all year long, and he had made his first start in the Hamiltonian. And wish Richie Silverman a happy birthday today, turning 24 today, and he's been driving for five years. Here's number six, Alaire Lobel. High hopes early for this one, Bob Wax from Canada owned him, but he sold him recently to Scandinavian interests. The son of Soren Nordin, the brother of Ulf Nordin, that makes Team Nordin, Jan Nordin drives. Number seven is next, and it's Defiant One. He surprised them last year at odds of 15 to one when he won the Breeders' Crown at two, and he could surprise them again this year. And the driver, Stan, is John Campbell, who at age 33 is becoming one of the all-time greats of the sport. He's won over 4,000 races, more than $63 million in purse money. It makes him uh, almost unbeatable this year in those statistics. Let's take a look now at number eight, Bola. He's from obscure beginnings in southern Illinois, but he's come from those beginnings to win $300,000. Impressive. And the driver is Bill Fay, somewhat of a 5 8 mile track specialist who's been driving for 20 years and he's been dash winning record holder at the Meadows, Scioto Downs, and Pompano Park. And completing the field, Sly Bowl, Hanover, number nine. This colt has beaten Super Gill and Defiant One as recently as September 30th, but he drew into the second tier of starters and it makes a very tough assignment. And Dan Shetler, 38-year-old, who started grooming for Del Insco back in 66, went on his own three years later and has become one of the most successful driver trainers in the business. Well, 11 of them in the field, but there are four dominant horses, and Stan takes a look at the top contenders. Let's uh, find out who are the ones to beat. Here are the leading contenders for tonight's Breeders' Crown as they started in the Kentucky Futurity. Outside is Defiant One, owned by Ann Beisinger, Audio wife of trainer driver Howard Beisinger, and Eva Duringer of Austria, former Miss World. The Colt is the defending champion in this group, having won the Breeders' Crown as a two-year-old last year at Mohawk in Ontario. He almost didn't race, having a slight temperature that morning, and then almost didn't qualify, finishing fourth in his elimination. In the final, however, he stormed home from seventh to nip firm tribute at the wire. 
This is Huggy Hanover, currently the hot horse of the three-year-old trotting division. He won the third jewel of the Triple Crown, the Kentucky Futurity, at the Red Mile in Lexington early in October, and then won the prestigious Colonial Stake at Maryland's Rosecroft Raceway in this dramatic stretch battle with Defiant One. Trainer driver and co-owner Ron Waples gets at home a winner on the inside at the rail. Super Gale was Harness Racing's most expensive trotting yearling at $500,000. He won five of six races and $328,000 as a two-year-old last year and has added another $261,000 this year, including this victory in the review futurity at Springfield, Illinois. He is one of three trotters in tonight's race from the Continental Stable, trained by John Johnson and driven by Brent Lindstedt. Johnson will drive the stable's Continental Spirit tonight, with the brilliant Bill O'Donnell driving the third horse in the entry, Southern Newton, winner of the first leg of the Triple Crown, the Yonkers Trot. Here is the leading money winner in the field, Firm Tribute. He was purchased for $25,000 by his owner, trainer, driver, 31-year-old Mark O'Mara, two years ago. O'Mara looked for a partner, couldn't find one, and kept the colt. Last year, Firm Tribute won $474,000. This year, $560,000 to go over $1 million. And O'Mara sold him the Swedish interest for $965,000. We purchased them, we broke them, and we developed them, and then raced them. And uh, the only thing, I did sell them earlier in the season, but I was able to keep them and still train them. So it's it's still like he's mine, and or the families, or the stables, or whatever. Fam Firm Tribute is a family horse, and has earned the young O'Mara's a home in Boca Raton, Florida. Mark's wife, Martha, understandably considers him a special favorite in the family. We got married uh, on the eve of a, a very big race, and uh, Jade Lobel was in a $500,000 race the, the day before, so the, the week was a little hectic, I guess I should say, and uh, everything worked out real well. He, a, a lot of the relatives were in town uh, for the wedding, and they got to see what we do for a living and, and what we're involved with in, uh, in uh, actually the most successful time of, of our careers. And uh, the horse won, we won a, a $500,000 race and, and we got married the next day. Uh, the, the only thing is the business didn't dictate a honeymoon. Uh, I had to, to leave later on that day and, and go to Canada with the horse. Like many top harness horsemen, Mark O'Mara is not a first generation trainer driver. He learned his profession from his father, highly respected trainer Frank O'Mara. My dad was, was in it. I wanted to follow in his footsteps, and I always wanted to, or, or hopefully, be as good or as successful as he was. With the success that we've had last year, the year before, this year, uh, probably the biggest key to all that is, is the family or the, the whole operation. Uh, my dad is, is probably the biggest reason that we, we've had success. The family that trains together profits together, and Firm Tribute has propelled the O'Maras to prominence. And let's take a look at uh, Firm Tribute with Mark O'Mara in the bike, warming up, getting ready for the central moment of his racing career. He's 9 to 5 as we get set for race time. We'll be back with the race right after this. Uh, yeah, if you want to. Yeah. We, we can talk from there. Now, we've got Phil. Do, what are you going to do? You're going to do post positions after after current odds. Okay, fine. Okay, and then if we have any Phil, we'll just we'll just talk you to the race. Now, shall I make mention of our of our uh, portable camera in the car? Uh, are you going to come back with this shot? Why don't I open it up with this? And I say. Yeah. I'm going to say, this is what it looks like to the starter.
This is what it looks like to Gary Reese, who is the starter of the races here at the Meadows. We have a live camera, a portable camera, in the starting gate. Let's check odds uh, just a minute or so before post time. The three horse entry, Continental Spirit, Super Gill, and Southern Newton, five to two. Firm Tribute holds as the nine to five favorite. Flying Scott is up to 30, and Huggy Hanover, second choice with the betters here at two to one. Rule the wind is up to 50, and long shot is Alaire Lobel. Defiant one, last year's winner of the two-year-old trot in the Breeders' Crown is at eight to one. Bola is up to 80, and Sly Bowl Hanover is at 25 to one. Now, those are the program or head numbers. Let's see how they will line up in terms of post position. If we were looking straight down on the starting gate, you can see Firm Tribute at the bottom of the screen, though, is next to the rail, and just behind Firm Tribute will be Southern Newton and Flying Scott, who will be second out from the rail just behind that one, Sly Ball Hanover. Stan Bergstein, what's the influence here? Sometimes it's Swedish, sometimes it's Canadian, sometimes it's a uh, United States dominated. What's in this one? Well, it's Swedish and has been from the start. Back in eight, uh, 1984, when this race started, the Nordines finished one, two, three with Baltic Speed, Sandy Bowl, and Giorgio D. And uh, tonight, of course, it's John Johnson and Bert Lindstedt with their three horse entry of Continental Spirit, Super Gill, and Southern Newton, with O'Donnell driving Southern Newton. And here we go with uh, some great history. Jan Nordin, who won this race with Baltic Speed, he drives Alaire Lobel. John Campbell, who drove Prakas to victory, is in this one. And Waples, who drove Sugarcane Hanover, uh, handles uh, Huggy Hanover tonight. And Campbell, who handled Mac Lobel, he's with Defiant One. And we're ready for the start. Take a look at that action. Here, uh, up and trotting, going right out for the lead. 1A, Super Gill, down along the rail. Number two, Firm Tribute. But this is number one, Continental Spirit. Four wide on the outside. Rule the win. As the race into the turn, Bola, fifth on the outside. Down along the rail, six. As the race around the turn, Southern Newton, seventh on the outside. Huggy Hanover, in at the rail. Slybo Hanover racing eight. Defiant one on the outside. Opening quarter and a very fast. 27 and four. As he's done it the first time, firm tribute. Rule the win. Up on the outside. Now second and going on. Super Gill getting the trip. Third at the rail. Continental Spirit racing for Southern Newton moves up fifth. Bola sixth on the outside. Slipo Hanover seventh. Huggy Hanover goes to the outside. Flying Scott ninth. Defiant one tenth. The Lair Lobel trails the half. 56 and 2. Backside and first and quarter and 28 and 3. Rule the win is off stride, but Firm Tribute leads the way. By a length and a half. Supergill racing second. Continental Spirit third. Southern Newton is fourth. Flying Scott moves up fifth. Huggy Hanover sixth. Defiant one. Seventh on the outside. As the race into the turn of the three quarter mark. Three quarters. One. Twenty five and two. Backside in 29 seconds. Around the final turn. Firm tribute with the lead. Racing second at Super Gill. Those two are going to battle it out. Down the stretch they come. Firm tribute at the rail. Super Gill goes to the outside. It's Firm tribute. Super Gill trying to close on the outside. Firm tribute. Super Gill on the outside. Firm tribute and Super Gill in the R. One, 55 and three. A photo for win between Firm Tribute at the rail, Supergill on the outside, Southern Newton comes home third. Houston, the track announcer, called it a photo finish. From here, it looked like Firm Tribute on the inside, winning it by a whisker. A well-measured drive by young Mark O'Mara, who has that great eye for the yearlings and the touch in the sulky. And let's watch it again, Stan. A thrilling finish, and it's a very game effort for Firm Tribute. Went to the front, fought off uh, Rule the Wind, and of course, Brent, uh, Bernd Lindstedt was right in behind with Supergill. He had perfect striking distance. He just did not have quite enough colt, but they said this was the best of the three-horse entry, and here he comes, charging up on the outside as Firm Tribute fights for his life, and in championship fashion, holds on coming to the wire. Unofficially, it's Firm Tribute who had the most victories, 15, and the most money in the bank, over a million going in. Looks like he'll add uh, almost another $200,000 with this performance in 155 and 3. Back with more after this.
It's uh, still a photo on the board, but unofficially we called it firm tribute in a dramatic, desperate lunge at the wire and uh, Super Gill finishing second. But a big round of applause for Mark O'Mara as he guides firm tribute into the uh, winner's circle. And it has to be a happy time for he and his dad. And also for Carl Gusta Gustafsson of Sweden, who paid $965,000 to O'Mara for this colt earlier in the year. Part of Roger Houston's calls, he said Super Gill getting the trip, which makes Firm Tribute's uh, victory even more important. Absolutely, because Firm Tribute was cutting it, Super Gill was right in behind him, and Firm Tribute had a battle on his hands early with Rule the Wind. Finally dispatched him, and then still had enough to hold off Super Gill coming out of the two hole right behind him. And the numbers are up on the board and also the official sign. And it looks like another part of the number one entry finished third, although at this point we do not know which one it was. It was one B, I do believe. Mr. O'Donnell was Southern Newton. And so Firm Tribute uh, is officially the winner. And uh, with uh, Super Gill finishing second and the other part of the entry, Super Newton finishing third. Let's go to Kenny Rice in the winner's circle. And with me, as you might expect, Dave is a happy Mark O'Mara. Congratulations. Thank you, Kenny. Now, coming down the stretch there at the end, you certainly had to put on a big effort because you had a good horse in Super Gill ahead of you. Yeah, Super Gill got a real good trip in behind us, and uh, I knew that he wouldn't be, uh, I, I knew that he would have a lot of trot. Okay, as we take a look at it again now, coming out of the gate here, I know that you felt good about firm tribute coming into this race. Yeah, I was here ahead of time at the track, and uh, he felt real good at the racetrack, and uh, we had a, a very good uh, luck on the draw, and I think the rail really helped because we were able to get out of there ahead of the others, and, and that was the key to the whole race. And just your thoughts as you were turning and uh, coming down that stretch, did you feel that you had enough horse there on the rail that you'd be able to come through? Well, he felt awful good, and he felt pretty strong uh, considering the fractions, but I knew that the other horse had got the best trip. Congratulations again, Mark. A big effort tonight for you and for Firm Tribute, and sometimes it's always a little tough to come back from that two- to three-year-old season. You never know how they're going to do a lot of times. Well, he came back, and he made it through the whole season and uh, showed that he was just as strong at the end of the season as he was ever. As far as we look at now at the rest of the race here, and uh, again, we're talking about a very good trip here for Super Gill, which certainly makes it even more impressive for Firm Tribute, I think, tonight. Well, they're both very good horses, uh, Super Gill and him, and that just makes it all more credible when we end up beating them. Okay, now, as you see right here at the half of 56 and 2, I would imagine you expected a pretty good time out of the horses that we had here tonight. Yes, the track was very good. We, we got a real good night for racing and uh, produces fast times. Okay. Your analyst right now of this race, uh, you're, as you look at it right here, what are you thinking at this stage? Uh, you're, you're racing second at this time. Do uh, you think you're set up in pretty good shape here as you come down with about uh, a little over a quarter to go? Well, I'm, I'm still in front, yes. Uh, and I'm just trying to get him wound up and keep him on the bit and keep him live and let him know that, that the race isn't over. Okay. And again, as you see here on the rail, uh, some thoughts when you come down those final strides. I know it's never over until it's over, as they say. No, no, the, the wire wasn't getting there quick enough for me. <laughs> I don't know who's ti more tired, him or me. Oh, and he certainly looked very strong at the finish. Very strong. Thanks, Mark. Thank you, Kenny. And congratulations again. A big effort as we talk right here. Now, what were you thinking right there? What did you say to Bert? I said congratulations. I thought maybe he nipped me. <laughs> okay. I just knew both horses had raced good, and uh, uh, his horse raced very well, and so did mine, whether I finished first or second. Okay. Thanks, Mark. Back to you, Dave. And firm tribute, the, the winner at 520, 320, and 260. Super Gill and Southern Newton coupled in the wagering. They pay exactly the same, 360 place and 340 to show. Back with more after this. Stay with us.
Okay, well, there'll be no uh, winner interview. Okay, so final order of finish, and then final thoughts from Stan. Okay, are you going to do anything with the presentation here? Okay, fine. I'll mention it if you want to use that as your uh, before final order of finish. Where does this horse go from here, Stan? Uh, I don't know. I don't know whether he plans to race him or not. Okay, so. Stand up, Bill. Stand up. You've got top to bottom, right? Okay. Let me at I'm not going to say all the names. Dell Miller, the founder of the Meadows, one of the great drivers, great horsemen of all time, presenting the trophy there. James Eckenrode, the chairman of the uh, Pennsylvania Racing Commission, also presenting the trophy. And there they are, top to bottom. Where did you finish? Firm tribute on the top. Super Gill second, Southern Newton finishing third, 155 and three. It was quite a performance, Stan. Last quarter got a little slow, 30 and a fifth, as they got tired coming home. But uh, looks like Firm Tribute didn't get as tired as they needed for Super Gill to catch him, so he held on. And what a family, Mark O'Mara, they're celebrating tonight. 25,000 purchased, he's won a million, 221. Next Friday, it's the two-year-old trotters in the first of our two one-hour specials from Pompano Park, live beginning at 10.30 Eastern, right here on ESPN. Breeders' Ground 88 has been brought to you by Pompano Park, the winter capital of harness racing. And by Budweiser, Beachwood Age, for that clean, crisp taste, this Bud's for you. Travel arrangements made through, and a promotional fee paid by U.S. Air, the official airline of the Breeders' Crown. See you next Friday night from the Florida Gold Coast. So long, everyone. <laughs>